Now everyone is silent. <laughs> welcome to the <laughs> Gwen After Dark. I'd like to welcome everybody on Podbean. Uh, Codexel and I are now officially members of Podbean, patron, and iTunes soon. And of course, you can catch us here every day, Monday through Friday, uh, same bad time, same bad channel. Today is going to be a little bit different. We're celebrating our one year or one week anniversary. Codexel, guess what? Okay, Codexel, guess what? Sorry, um, did I miss something? Yeah, no, guess what? Yeah, <laughs> uh, what? We are the longest running daily nighttime talk show in Gwent history. Dude, I already applied to get more records, so you don't have to keep reminding me. I will do this on a daily basis. It's happening. Now. Okay, but enough, <laughs> enough about us. I've got, we've got special guests here today. That's the main part of the show. We've got superstars. We've got some of the best players in the world here today, and I'm going to go wide uh, and that's not just my nickname in high school. That is the feed we're about to do. Boom! Look at that. Look at that all-star talent cast we have assembled for you. Um, and I, I just clicked out of it on my screen, but I remember who's here. Let's start with Dale. How's it going? That is the sultry tones of Dale. He is a Gwentleman, <laughs> and he has been nourished by popcorn today, so he should be ready for today's show. I'm ready to take on the world now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, dude. All right, and I believe second was Thundercloud Mojo. Uh, Thundercloud again? That's, no, no, no. That's I was just messing with you. No, uh, he's part man, part Thundercloud, all amazing Gwent player. Mojo, welcome. Yeah, thanks for having me. My pleasure. All right, and then, of course, the man that needs no introduction, the early riser himself, Zelos. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Just so you know, all these people are here, uh, thank you, and they are here in the ass crack of dawn. Um, they're very tired, and they did it for us and you guys, so thank you and support them. We really appreciate it. And of course, Freddie Babes. What's up, guys? Thank you for having me. You may remember Freddie Babes as the fourth, you remember him such films as the fourth Pass the Floor champion. <laughs> very good, honored to have him. And of course, my, my friend, my life partner, Codex Hell. I haven't you proposed yet. Well, it's early. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> All right. So we're calling this Gwen After Dark, the round table. We have the greatest players in the world assembled here. And I don't care what anybody says. To me, they're the greatest players in the world. And we're going to start at the beginning with the state of the meta. What's hot? What's not out there? Yeah, we're kind of talking about it before the show. And I have another look at that. Look at this segue. Boom. Went to another four panel. Just so talented, breaking down graphics with a little thing and whatever. Okay, so open it up. Whoever wants to start, what are the hot, number one, in y'all's opinion, hot deck right now? Who should start? Yeah, who's going to go first? Yeah, then. I talk a lot. If I, if I can start, um, I believe that uh, brand consume is like really. Yeah, brand consume is on the rise, but just generally consume monsters is a hot deck. Yeah. All right, what do y'all think? Dale? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> save, save that. Behemoth consume, I think it's at the moment strongest, but... Like, yeah, brand, 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 behemoth. Brand, behemoth. Even, even without brands and behemoths, you can still have a strong consume deck. I think consume just in general is... Uh, consume is just busted. Mm -hmm. like, I, actually, the brand behemoth is quite weaker than the no brand, no behemoth version, in my opinion. I've had much more success with uh, no brand, no behemoth than with the brand. Yeah, I'd agree with that. But I made the sort of one that a lot of people were using, which were the no brands. But I don't know. So I'm probably biased. But like the behemoths are sort of like really high tempo, uh, sort of gain later in a round. I don't know. If, am I going too in depth? Like no, man. Break yeah, it down. Like what is like, so? What would be the difference? The advantages between yeah. a Vran behemoth or a non-Vran or a Vran consumable. What are the main differences? Um, I mean, the Vrans are like quite vulnerable to Scorch, right? And Scorchel is pretty popular as well. I guess that's like one of the other decks we should talk about as like hot. Yeah. Uh, but to be fair, like. You, you, just, you always give Scorch targets, and if you um, if you are careful with your brands, and if you have um, like your first brand just to activate your first behemoth, and like your second brand to start like eating the spiders, um, 
that is spawns from the behemoths and your second brand doesn't even grow, grow that big that fast so you have a time not sitting buffing up your neckers and like i don't know in the last two days it seemed to me like i don't even want neckers first round most of the time like i'm pretty happy growing into one of them later on i'm actually like usually you don't black this man but i feel like running maybe no like one necker warrior and uh, only f like just three neckers but black this remember like black this from early so you don't have them in your opening hand so they can't just get targeted by scoyatel uh, block or uh, from sibirin and then just carry over the strength later on so you have something to like consume in round two and round three that's like a that seemed to me like uh, the biggest issue if you're like getting locked on round one. So, so I and feel, I feel yeah, like yeah. Um, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're talking too long. That's there are okay. some key, like the main key differences for me between those two archetypes is that, like Neckers, you have more like stable over time power that built into the Neckers and the consume, and it's easy to get the sequencing so that you can get two big units back to back. So that you know, if one gets scored, you still have the big, another big keep to fall back on. Whereas with the brand, it's quite hard to get the same sequencing, so that you would get two big brands back to back that you can preserve for the next round. You know, in the case of Scorch, which makes it more brittle overall. And, and not to mention, the combo pieces are just vulnerable to getting out of standard all day long. Exactly. That's why the the Vran Behemoth it's. Uh much more inconsistent than the Novran Behemoth because your combo can always get disrupted and if your combo gets disrupted you cannot gain tempo. I mean to be fair you have like usually four tries to get it off right? You have your first um, you have your first uh, brand that you play and then if it gets sniped or like shaked or anything you just uh, you just go ahead and play one of your behemoths afterwards and hope that one of them gets sniped if it doesn't get sniped you maybe just consume like uh with ekimara or like you maybe a giant tomato or something and then like you get your uh, uh spiders out too and it just seems so good to me like filling your deck is actually so important because drawing into your gold cards is like really really important that state of the game and like if you don't draw your gold cards, you, you're kind of screwed, I think. Like, since, since the Karen is such a big deal, I think the spy is also really important, at, at least against Koyeta, so they can't beat you. And, um, yeah, Igni is not that great at the moment against, like, it's not good against Koyeta, but it helps in the mirror a lot. And I just feel like you have troubles winning the mirror if you don't draw Behemoth, because we just outvalue you around one pretty hard. And you have to get out really early. Like you have to time your when you get out of a round so that they maybe get spiders into the next round that they draw into. Like you have to get out of round uh, like round three, but that means you have to concede round one, which is never great. So Dale, what do you think? You've been awfully quiet a little bit. I am just quiet at prison normally. Um, no, I think my issue with the brand version is well, it does have definitely more power to it. Um, Especially with a couple of, I think a lot of times with a couple of the trade type. Um, but you're able to just get these big swings in and early, and you can really get swings in late and try to keep over everything. And if it works, it works great. I, there, there's no doubt about it. But it, it's so vulnerable to stopping the brands, stopping the Ericus. Like, it, it's, you kind of switch your mindset because even coming from like a split off perspective, you're not worried about. You know, trying to get the good scorch because you know you're going to get a good scorch you're trying to disrupt their combo and you're able to disrupt the combo fairly easily especially with what's currently all sort of standard they run in a lot of control type decks mana core venom has made a really big comeback which uh, helps with a little bit of good via uh, neckers i think just to kind of help hold them out of the deck and kind of race them on hey, get a necker warrior in time or not um but uh, that being said i think that all those things that uh, it does poorly against, it makes it even stronger in the mirror. So if you're constantly queuing up against monsters, mm -hmm. uh, then you want to be running the brands. You want to be running, like, you, you want to be as greedy as possible because you know exactly what your opponent's capable of. And I've actually right. been experienced a couple of new, like, fun things with the mirror is that, if you, especially if you're, it's Dagan v. Dagan, 
it comes down to card advantage a lot of times to, to try and be able to weather your opponent and uh, not get weathered yourself. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, that's an interesting point because uh, I, w- I have been talking on this show, uh, I think a couple of days ago, just about how strong Dagon is in terms of the tactical flexibility it brings. The, the fact that, you know, it's so good in consume monsters because it can both threaten with weather and pull out combo pieces at, you know, or at least try to at leisure with first light. I think that's a huge part of why consume monsters is just so effective. You know, and then add to the fact that it's impossible to tell whether it's a weather deck or a consume deck if you're playing in mid range. That just makes Dagon just insanely powerful. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's one of the. the... Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. I was just gonna say I think it's more of it's um like you look at the, like the good decks right now. Like I know we're preparing this as Squirtle, so you can that uh, I saw she who had it to tell us a hot deck as well. Um, but you look at uh, like what tries, like you try and dissect the deck and be like, all right, what makes this strong? And, and it, it's almost a spaghetti problem, like because you, you pull on the one thing and you try and discuss it, and you end up pulling out the whole rest of the deck with it, the whole faction. Um, so I think it's like these top decks, these hot decks right now, they mesh very, very well with each other. Like all aspects of the deck can help with make it simulate as well all aspects of the deck help with the game plan like there's no odd card out that's really not being like yes i want to be like supporting these other three cards uh there are also some different variations in the monsters like but uh the core remains the same and variations could be like either you're playing uh, the run consume with uh grave hag or you're playing the brand consume without grave hack, but instead you're playing, I don't know, Alzer's Double Cross or Cleaver. Depends uh, ex- exactly what you're facing on the ladder, pretty much. If you're facing a lot of Squirtle, grave hack is not a good idea since it can be removed pretty easily. If you're facing a lot of Hensel, the grave hack is a good idea because they don't have that many removals and so on. It differs, it differs a lot what's hot on the ladder in the current day. I've been trying out um, Cyprian Wiley quite a lot. I'm finding it quite a, quite a great card in the mirror, actually, because uh, you can hit the Neckers and uh, deny them from popping out you know, in future rounds. And uh, he's also just like solid removal against Hensel. You know, you're getting rid of Priscilla, King of Beggars, because it banishes them when it removes their base strength. So, yeah, I think that's quite a cool tech card at the moment. Not too many people catching on to it. But yeah, I think we'll it's I've seen more of it than in the it past. Is massively yeah. hard. But just by the nature of being able to remove base strength and banishing stuff, like, people look at it and think it's a 10 strength card, but we have, we have so much more than that. Well, huh? like in top 100, it's basically like. Uh, not every is Squealist, but a lot of them run, run it because you can pull it with a uh, uh, hero power with Fuberhawks so easily and then like, it's so great against monsters. And I think Garuna started running uh, decklist yesterday, but he's like a really good monster consume player. And um, he started yesterday with um, Azura's Double Cross, Crohn's and Cleaver and Cyprian Wiley in his monster deck just to counter other monster decks and uh, to like lock, lock and unlock targets, and um, I think he said he will bring that to to uh, like or some some version of that um, to the upcoming good game tournaments. And I think he like he's on to something also because that, that guy is insane. Like he's so good at the game. <laughs> like honestly, <laughs> that guy trusts me every time I see him on that. He's pretty bad man. So just so to to, to sum up, uh, monster consumes pretty good. Just trying to move this. I mean, we have some different. Vi- so, Monster Consumes is very good for the new players out there, uh, or for the experts. That these this panel certainly is. Uh, they're very good, but you can have subtle variations in the ladder where you are. So, let's go to rank two. It's Soyatel. Now, that's pretty. It's pretty pretty broad. I mean, that's like. So, what in is there a p- specific? That's hard to say. A deck in Soyatel that's dominating right now. <laughs> the- there is no specific deck that's dominating right now. It's the whole faction. All faction has has a few core cards which you can run in every variation and have a pretty decent win rate with. That's that's my experience with Squirtle so far. Yeah, I think Squirtle is kind of 
busted at the moment. It's the the passive which gives you like free card advantage oh. all the time. Uh, it's the Elven Mercs that like chain into more Elven Mercs, you know, crazy tempo. And you've got really powerful gold cards like Saskia and Oglace, which kind of yeah, they're just like not on the same level that uh, a lot of the other factions gold cards are. So. Mm, don't forget Iceberg, like. Yeah, don't forget Milva. I think Milva's the strongest card. Yeah, Milva. Yeah, yeah, Milva, of course. Actually, <laughs> Round one, first play, Milva, get free card in yeah. your hand. Why not? Oh, just so your opponent can Milva just straight after you and get the same, <laughs> the same combo off. <laughs> and we've achieved well, nothing. Not fair, boys. That's, that's just how it is, right? Milva into Milva. Into Operator Roach. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, yeah. But, I mean... One that I would say is like I, I think that people are on the, like I don't know who I can't remember who said exactly that comment who was with Freddy um but yeah that you can whack core cards into go over decks and they'll just work like I mean I've been running Francesca quite a lot and doing this sort of Nova Roach into Operator copying it and then shuffling Roach back in and it works and it wins yeah. just because I mean it it shouldn't really be that effective but it's it feels really quite effective considering that it's a little bit of a joke deck. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I've tried... Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, uh, okay. so, uh, I've tried that deck, Mojo knows he was watching my stream, and I failed terribly with it. Squat and it's not a <laughs> faction for me. It's just not a faction for me. Like, I keep losing against Squatel, but I can't win as a Squatel. It's just like, it's my bane. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> I keep trying all the different Squatel decks. The only deck that was uh, actually working for me was the row stacking before the positioning patch, and that's all. <laughs> well, that, that wasn't exactly difficult to play. Yeah, Nobody needs to know that. <laughs> Dale, where, where do you come on the Soyatel? Where, where, is there, is there a, deck, a trap deck? Is there just a control deck Soyatel? Is there a particular Soyatel that stands out for you? Uh, for I, I, as far as what's good, I, I think I agree. It's the core of the faction is good. I mean, you've got cards that are dragoons, especially being able to carry over strength, quite good. Um, but it, like, it, it's funny because the inherent disadvantage of it is that it's a low tempo play, and yet they are just like, well, we don't care. We have we have low tempo plays. We got Saskia. He was just you know thirty something points on the board real quick. Um, there's like Saskia, Isengrim, dragoon. Elven mercenaries to thin, and in addition to playing all the special, like you've got so much. Again, it's it's the synergy. There's the whole deck just complements itself so well, mm. and when you have something that has that, like it, it's you can. It, there, I've actually seen a lot of uh, people experimenting with the uh, like the Roach idea, or I'm trying to remember. It's really operator something weird at me, um, but like there's there's. So much that you can try and mess with with the maybe less used cards or the neutral cards from the deck, but are the faction, and they still work just because the core of the faction is good. I yeah. think if they chip, uh, sorry. I, I, no, no, go ahead, man. Oh, okay. I want. I wanted to say. I think if they change the how the passive, how the faction ability works, quite they will look much more different. Than it is right now. Yeah, that card that's is just pretty brutal. My, my opinion. All right, so what is the third? So we have Monster Consume. By the way, Freddy Babes, uh, a shout cast at your championship. That was an awesome run. You took a Monster Consume, your version, and beat Soyatel. I crushed it, right? 6 0? Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. But mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Like, that was back before people were, like, properly playing Consume a lot, I think. And, uh,. The meta's kind of adjusted at this point, I reckon, to... Like, Squirtel should beat monsters now, but the deck I have is sort of just beating them every time. I think it was a combination of Yang Con and just, like, high keep every time with Ekimaras and Ghouls and all the rest, but, yeah, I don't know. Fair Maybe enough. not the best anymore. I'm not sure. I haven't been having as much success. Oh, really? Are you, are you saying that the ST is, like, really favored? Against monsters at the moment? Against consume? Not like really favored, but it's it's probably like 60 40, I'd say. I mean, with the score. Really? With, 60 like, 40? Uh, I don't know. It's like, it's not the best matchup for them, but like any matchup's kind of fine if you ask I think. 
Uh, Every matchup is fine, but like, I, I wouldn't even say it's Boyatel's favorite against monsters. You reckon? I don't know, man. Yeah, it's it's good. Good. I have a lot of tech cards, though. I have a lot of tech cards. I've seen, actually, my, a decent amount of no scorches anymore in Boyatel. Yeah, I, I see wherever Aromancy, they just meme you with Aromancy into a glass uh, when like, you have to use your daylight to remove a weather effect and then you don't have like, first legs. You your hand necessarily, especially if you don't run a list that, like, um, like, uh, unless, like, if you run a, a list with the image and spiders, you don't run first, like, it's usually, and then, like, they just, wherever you last blow, and then you remove wherever, they just, wherever you get with your glass, and you kind of lost one, one, and you can't even stay in there because they just kill all your units on the back row, first by, and it feels bad. <laughs> Well, I feel like it, it's worth differentiating between like a ladder environment and a, and a tournament environment. In the sense, like you know, um, I think in a general uh, ladder deck situation, that the one the deck that I ran yeah, it was pretty decent against Mizzou. Like uh, what had a sixty percent win rate against Mizzou, maybe slightly higher than that. Um, even though you know I was running the brand and I had margarine, so there were plenty of ways to actually get rid of their power. Great. But in a ladder, sorry, in a tournament environment, then I, when I was playing against Karras in the finals, I could run Aromancy, and that was just completely destructive combined with card advantage. So I, I do think it's worth differentiating between them because you can have more tech and more specialization in tournament situations, you know? Yeah, yeah. sure. A lot of ladder, you have to try and play against the general field all the time. You're playing against a wide variety of people, so a wide variety of decks, and you never know what your point is. You, you have to really generalize your deck. But when you, you get to a tournament where you really play these tech cards, and you like, this deck, you have to take on this other one. You can really tech them. It's pretty much what you expect to face in the tournament because you can't possibly know for sure what you're gonna face. So let's say if you're gonna expect a lot of hand you're definitely gonna take T bomb or make a deck that can actually have 80 20, 80, 20 against hand and so on. All right, so so we got this consume and monster. Uh, sorry, story telling consume. What is the third deck? Is there a third deck out there that stands out as uh, one of the more powerful? Hansel. Hensel. Yeah, I think Zelt just said it. <laughs> <laughs> see, say, see how, <laughs> there you go. So Henselt. All right. So those are the top. So what about Henselt makes Henselt so difficult? I know huge burst potential, but what else? He's great at numbers. That's, that's only thing Henselt is good. He's great at numbers, and he's great at keeping those numbers through gold. Like, the, like Henselt does nothing else, and he's extremely good at it, and he's extremely good at taking around, and then passing and being like, okay, Give me, give, give me, give me round two for a card, and I'll, I'll, I'll sorry, I'll give you round two for a card, and I'll take round three because we're a long round. Thanks. Stop it. I... <laughs> it's live I TV. Like... It's live TV. Um... I mean, this is going to happen. <laughs> Zelos, share your thoughts. Okay. Hang on. Yeah, I, I feel like the like with Enzo, it's a lot of time, especially against Scoria. Like it's kind of dependent if they. Um... If they run that Mantico Venom and if they did it in time, like sometimes it's in the bottom of your deck and you, like your mercs just don't pull it. Um, and if, if they don't get the tempo in time, and like you kind of just lose because they have to recover all the tempo and like use resses to like in early rounds and then they don't have a tempo later on where they can chain um, medics. Um, and then they're kind of like just screwed because. Uh, and, I don't know, like from that point, I feel like Square is insanely strong in the sense of because they have that op option to just uh, prolong rounds. And against monsters, like you sometimes just get to run from uh, from Hansard if they like run into the right cards, if they have their golds, and if they have like a good silver in hand, you like, sometimes have bad luck and no chance to really come back into the game. I think this all kind of specializes right now in playing half this deck in one round and half this deck in another. Because it, it just wants you to throw out everything it can, be like, alright, here's all my bronzes, here's like a couple of my golds, whatever, and then win a round just through the sheer strength of those cards and the sheer number of those cards, and I think the Sea Tower is actually just really ramping up value there. And it's like, alright, cool, I've won this round, here's it all again, because I just res it all from my graveyard. It's, uh, it's, 
it was good enough the first time, it was good enough the second time. It's one of the really helps that pick out. Well, one of the basic, uh, sorry. Uh, one of the key defining features of most top tier decks is that they'll have some way of generating a lot of power from very few cards, whether that's like through strong keeps from round two to round three or round one to round two, or through some kind of like tutor chain, like or medic chain. You know that that's why in the past, you know, you inevitably you invariably saw like Shani Baron, Lopperkin into like Priscilla into King of Beggars, you know, etc. etc. For like crazy power from one card. And now we have a similar thing going on with Nenike, uh King of Beggars, and Priscilla as a trio combined with like Shani. Like you can just generate a huge amount of power from just one card. So that's why he's gonna always be there in the top tier. Yeah, I remember the current, uh, well, just Northern Realms list in general are all very similar. The leaders don't really change the deck list too much, I don't think. And it, it reminds me a lot of um, Duncoro's The Night deck that we saw a couple of patches ago that was just very much around these big, big res changes, chains, and I think we saw like some like 30 some points constantly uh, around three off of a single card. I've actually been seeing uh, Becca's Twisted Mirror, Ravages, like in the top 100. <laughs> I don't know if that's like a, yeah. an actual thing, but it seems to work quite well. They like, they play really hard for round one, take it like with uh, trebuchets and you know, all that sort of dandelion and the buffs, and then they play Stennis, and then Becca's Twisted Mirror out pops Roach, and you get like 20 point swing to win the game. It's pretty crazy, but. I don't know if it's going to be actual, like, consistent deck. I think that was actually good for, like, two days, and then uh, <laughs> it just didn't work yeah. anymore, because, like, people got to the top 100 with it, and then people knew what they were facing whenever they saw Radovid, because they can't, like, Radovid doesn't have the power swing against it, and, um, so, yeah, you, you know, it's, it's Twisted Mirror, you're a little bit careful with, like, what you buff, especially with monsters, if you even play Chiron. I, I played two games where I just, uh, like, I fucked up my keep so to, to play around it in the last turn because, like, I had two cards up on him and I just, like, instead of keeping 50 points from, like, some random brand warrior or something that <laughs> I just kept popping up, I took, like, a 9 point Akimara instead. And I think that's what people, like, did afterwards and I don't see Rado of it anymore, at least, like, today and uh, yesterday I didn't see any Rado of it decks anymore in top 100s. So, a few people figured out. In the top 100, is it pretty stable? Are there set decks you see or is it a huge climate change day to day? Sorry? In the, in the top 100 in general, is I'm sorry, let me get the microphone. In the top 100 in general, is it a pretty static environment? Is it pretty stable or you see huge swings day to day? I think each swing is more like uh, people experience uh, a lot in the top 100, especially uh, to catch their opponents by surprise. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, yesterday. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. Okay. Um, hey, go ahead. So, so at the, I think at the top of the ladder, that's where you'll see the most, like, commonly the most targeted innovation. Not, not in the sense of like people aren't experimenting now. Lower, but you will have a higher concentration of net deckers down, down there, and also people will like people are much quicker to react at the top of at the top of the ladder. They see what their opponents are playing and immediately think, okay, how do I deal with this? Whereas other people lower down, I think they their changes happen over the course of days rather than hours, and that's part of why the top meta is so fluid. That's very interesting. Yeah. Okay, any thoughts? So these top three, do we have the top three hot decks for those of you on Podbean that don't have my amazing graphics in front of you? The top three hot <laughs> consume monsters, Soyatel in general, and Henselt, uh, burst potential. So those are the hot. So as there now, let's go to the cold, as there has to be a flip side. Uh, and by the way, you don't see a picture of Codexel here. He's the Gwen After Dark logo. He has transformed himself to be part of the show. He's right there, always with me. Uh, he's the voice of intelligence in the show, obviously. So do we have a... What about all these other guys? What? <laughs> yeah, I know. I felt bad. I was doing the graphics and I was like, oh, shit. I don't have... Uh... 
I mean, oh, it's right. You sent me a rose too. Well, that sounded bad, but he sent me <laughs> he sent me an image of a rose for his avatar, and I just forgot. This is this is really awkward now, guys. It is. It has gotten it has gotten awkward. It it always was though. So is there a deck that was the hot and is now <laughs> not? Is there a deck besides maybe Skellige discard, uh, wound, anything? What do you mean, like from from last patch or now? Just in general, like one of the decks that can, that has been historically powerful that you still see in mid tier, low tier that's not as strong, like maybe that's that's losing power in the current meta at the top. Yeah, I think Brian is really good. To, like, I guess I guess Brian's just a good target for for cold deck. Like I, I tried Brand and like it, it works at like four point seven, four point eight kish. But if you want to climb higher, it's really hard. Like you do all right against Goyatel, but you really get destroyed by every monster consuming list that isn't running Grave because sometimes you can sneak victories against Grave because you have like damage in the last turn if you just hit them once with maybe like uh, Wild Boar or something. That feels pretty good. But usually you just lose against consumed lists. I think with this card you pretty much lose. You, not lose, you're unfavored against pretty much everything at this moment. They, they nerfed Bran in such a way that from a, from, um, OP, like it was before, to be quite useless unless you run some sort of new strategy that can work. But with the current strategy, it's just not possible. Morgvark is also also got nerfed a lot, and yeah. with the brand getting nerfed, Morgvark got nerfed automatically. Freddy Babes, what do you think? Where are you coming in on King Bran? Uh, I haven't really tried it enough to like say where. I, like, not enough people are playing Bran either. I think the wounding Skelly is a lot more popular, especially at the sort of mid mid ranks. Uh, I think I think Bran has potential. I really hope he does. I don't know, like Madman Lugos. I've seen a couple of lists around places. You can get quite a lot of uh, strength from Mortbar with the what are they? The Shieldsmiths? I don't know. The ones that buff mm -hmm. him up, you know. Yeah, uh, Shieldsmiths. Yeah, and the uh, the Freyers are always going to be good, right, in round three. So I don't know. It could be okay, but yeah, Bran's dropped a bit since last patch. I know. I know Garuna still sticks by his his discard skull and he, and he played it against me and um and won with it actually in the tournament but it's I, I feel like it's the kind of deck that you know will fare much better in certain matchups and isn't and as a result isn't quite as well suited for ladder deck the uh, ladder as other decks like it doesn't have enough great matchups right like in theory you can be a strong climber if you dominate like three matchups and lose all the rest right like as long as you're like beating Consume and Scoyatel and Henselt, what else do you need to beat? So, yeah, that's that's it really. Like Bran doesn't have enough really good matchups against the dominant decks, and as a result, we'll just be a bit of a mad ladder deck. Or be more of a meme deck with Kambi and uh, Hilab. Hilab. <laughs> uh, nobody runs with nobody. <laughs> I tell people saying that like Cambi got buffed because you know you can't kill it with like Triss anymore and then nobody runs Cambi. I mean I try it today but I say like not today only I, I try it a few days in a row but Cambi is just uh, it's too mean it doesn't work. If you saw me trying to get it like it's really only like half decent against monsters and even there you just lose. Like, I don't know, it's just my, my favorite MMR tank tank, I guess. But it's fun to play at least. Like, the visual effect is cool. I guess that's what you really play the game for. Right? Red, random animations popping up, enjoying them. I mean, that's a cool effect. Dale, where are you coming on King Brand? Oh, that sounded bad. Where did you? <laughs> <laughs> ah, late night. Okay. Uh, where, where, what is your opinion on King Bran? No, he definitely. It, it, the deck got nerfed in two ways. It got directly nerfed. Like King Bran is no longer doing those plus ones. But then the locking change also affected the lock, as people really wanted to experiment with locking. And there's 
literally most of Mortbar Kazali is just like, oh, well, that's 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 not that's not good. <laughs> so that combined with the like the changes there it just really didn't do any favors for the deck. And if you try and compare it to like the current top two decks, um, I think it was Codex Roller who actually mentioned earlier that they're able to generate a lot of value with not a lot of cards. And that's not something that King Brand can do anymore. He just flat out doesn't have it. He, it's such a an investment deck. And it, it's a lot more fair now in a way, but fair just doesn't cut it in the meta. You need to be you need to have that edge. So you, you can't have a deck that's based around trying to, you know, keep a unit buffed up and keep that strength up around and do it slowly, uh, whenever everyone else is just moving so much quicker than you are. Very good. Okay, so King Bran, as very well stated, um, King Bran is the cold. Is there any other, uh, what other decks are out there that have fallen significantly? Uh, Monster Weather is still pretty strong, I would imagine. Is it, is it falling down? Skellige Wound? Monster Weather is more like uh, a choice for tournaments. You don't see it that, uh, that often on ladder because there's first light in the game, there's consumed quite an enhanced. So with Dex, yeah, say, uh, cool. go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. I, Weather Monster's probably got worse because it changed to First Light and like Scoitel's so prevalent. I'm hesitant to say that, I don't know, because uh, yeah, it's just like you can clear the whole board of Weather so you can save a First Light until there's two Weather effects on the board and then that's like one card for two cards every time. It's kind of not fair on the Weather Monster player, but like, and if you're running three first lights as a score tell player, like, as soon as Weather Monsters becomes viable, it's just going to fall down to the score tell players when they know what they're playing against, pretty much. And you can, like, tell straight away, usually, you see the Eridin instead of Dagon or whatever, and then, you know, what to, you know, keep in your hand or whatever. Well, the other thing with Weather Monsters that really got hit is the uh, Ragnar Rod change. I, I think it's oh, like, yeah, so yeah, Ragnar. I think if Ragnarok still had all three weathers uh, effects that tied to it, I think weather monsters would be seeing a lot more of them growing up. Yeah. It will still be a gold card for a silver uh, for a bronze card. So it's not quite the trade you would want to make. Uh, I like it. I feel you really have a point there because like, not being able to swing a board like as last card. Like you don't keep first like necessarily as last card you know, when like your opponent just has more points on the board. So let's say you run like square turn and want to recycle your deck and then uh, at the last card they just play Ragnarok and deny all your value. And you don't necessarily count on that. So, and uh, it is so swingy that and. I, th I think Ragnar really worked well, and, uh, like I'm also really sad that like they changed it to be honest because it takes away like so much potential. Like I like Ragnar as a cast personally, and with a change to first, like I think they could have just left it in the game. Same with Brand to be fair. Like I think they changed way too much. Also with Restore, like you yeah. you just took away so much potential from these decks. But to be fair, as a Squirtle player against Weather Monsters, you always want to use one first light for the clear skies, the rest for Rally, and keep uh, Glass clear skies for the last round or something like that. Uh, if, you, yes, if, if you know what you're up against, there's no way a Weather they can, uh, can actually surprise you and not have a direct answer to their place. Codexo, where are you coming on this? I, I feel like Call. Like, uh, I mean, I noticed, you know, one day that everyone was playing consume, so I just went for a, like a monster get the game squeeze on a day and won every single game. Like, just because everyone was just like literally, I I, I watched uh, like what my friends told me like Chaotic Recent had uh, had streamed the game that I had with him, and he threw he threw away his first light for whatever reason. <laughs> I have no idea why he would throw first light away against Aegon, but. Yeah, he had, he had zero first lights, and I was playing a weather deck, and it was an easy game. Like, I feel like in, as, at the top of the ladder, weather is so uncommon that you can, you can be the only weather player in there and actually get away with it, you know? <laughs> but otherwise... Yeah, another, another really good thing for weather, is I think that I've seen a little bit of it, and again, it's, it's not the most common of the decks, but uh, drowners are 
pretty decent, especially against the consumer matchup, uh, especially if they're running brands. It's like, well, you just can go to this bro and get right. I think uh, it was uh, Mojo who was mentioning it earlier that he was uh, having some trouble against uh, some Sway Tail that was just running Aromancy, and if you're running a, a Dakin deck that has a lot more than just Aromancy, uh, it could be having some trouble. Yeah, yeah but I, I, I agree, it's a medical. I, I, I've actually been running Bronze Torrential Rain, and it's so good in this meta. Like, if you run D-Bomb and, and Torrential Rain, you can you can laugh at, like, Hensel as well. It's actually very really funny. It always feels I, like there's a single row per patch or per yeah. meta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frost I, before, and now it's Rain. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's been Frost and Rain, it's been all over the place. Do we have a... Th oh, okay. few days ago, sorry. Uh, I remember a few days ago I was playing Hanselt and I just faced the Dagon that was playing Weather and I got wrecked by three Torrential Rains in oh his God. deck. <laughs> he had three Torrential Rains and T-Bomb on top of that. And I was like, what the fuck is this? What do you actually legitimately do against that as Hanselt? Like, do you some, like, just hope that your unit has become agile? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, how can... All right, all right, man. Roll the trebuchets up a row. I was about to say, how can you not move them up? Like they're they're on wheels. Like what? <laughs> all right. So what's the third deck um, that has fallen from Mount Rushmore? I don't know. We got good cards over there. I would say Nilfgaard, but it was never good. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which deck is so it's cool deck now? <laughs> Doesn't get much cooler than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna put it there. Like, I mean, I know, I know, it's like the same faction as, as Hensel, but I kind of feel like Hensel has dominated Foltest because the, the the mirror is quite common, and they just, you know, Foltest just can't keep up with the points. Yeah. So I, maybe Foltest. Also, you have, well, you also have dead trebuchets once we promote, so like their trebuchets go off for like three points every turn, and you also have nothing, so. <laughs> That's I've, also the problem. I've seen a really interesting Foltus deck uh, with PFIs and um, Odrin, which actually can work as a surprise. Mm. I'm not so sure that Foltus falls in this uh, the cold category. Mm. He, he's pretty good, and also with the uh, also the Foltus swarm can work uh, if teched properly can work very well against monsters. But did you just say that you saw an interesting Voltes PFI deck? Yeah. I thought I heard you just say that. <laughs> yeah, why? No, I'm just joking because, you know, there's, there's so much community it, it, towards PFI. It, it, was, it wasn't running Marjoram's, was it? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> like, really, poor infantry plus Odin. Oh, I just got wrecked on ladder by that deck a few days ago. Oh. Yeah, I was like, I'm the whole that. All right, so like suddenly round three, 120 points. I was like, what? <laughs> Damn. So Nilfgaard, um, has it, does it, is, <laughs> is there any potential for it to be good? Oh, for sure there's potential for it to be good. Nilfgaard is just a faction. It, if you compare it to any of the other factions, it literally has less cards than available to it. It, it, it just, there's not, there's not enough cards there for the faction to really shine. And I think as soon as we get more cards in, the card's going to be shooting up because there's so much potential in that faction. There's so many cards that do such unique effects, such cool effects, and really powerful effects. And it's just, it, it's waiting for its moment to get to the point that it synergizes well with, it, with itself because it's trying to do a couple of different archetypes and doesn't have enough cards to do either. That's interesting. I always, I, I, I totally agree with you. I think that uh, they're very specific in their, in what they can do that you're, I didn't think of it in terms of them being limited with the other part of the collection, but you're right. They don't synergize specifically well with the rest of the collection, although they do have a set of skills, a unique set of skills that they could use to their advantage. Taken. Thank you. No? No, no one? That, that, that's no, yeah. fucking painful. Come on now. Anyone I else? I think Nilfgaard has kind of got worse than it used to be. Am I the only one that thinks that? I don't no, know. It's, really, it's really true. It's really true. Like, yeah. <laughs> They need sort of way fighting. too many cards to put up a good amount of points on the board. Way too many cards in a specific order. Yeah. I think, I think uh, uh, Calvada has been mm. doing fairly well. Yeah, it's decent. 
It's decent, but not good enough. Like, I think it's only because it's good against Scoia'tael and yeah. you know, people playing oh, that. It's, so. it's, I think it's just a lot more than just Scoia'tael, I think, because a lot of times what it's... I think it, what's, it kind of gets ingrained in you that card advantage matters, so whenever your opponent gives you a, a <laughs> Cantarella, and then you're like, oh, okay, I'll just I'll play this, and then next is fine, and then the Cantarella comes over, and then another Cantarella comes over, and you're just like, well, do I keep playing or not? Because I'm <laughs> hard advantage, and I know he's just going to take this all back. Yeah, it's, like, it's like giving a friend a fake gift. It's like, hey, you can have this. I'm, I'm going to come back for it later. <laughs> I, I, I feel like as long as you actually, I mean, fundamentally, if he copies Cantarella, he's going to probably win round one. Like, it's almost an interminable amount of power, at least the pullback to extra spies and have card advantage, so the, the best approach I've found is just trying to break the combo and pass just before he has the Calvate. And then just, I mean, they, they're they not very good at generating power in a few cards, so you, you just target their keeps that they're trying to use to win round three by passing at a good time. And then, well, if they don't have a keep, then they're pretty screwed. They can't generate very much well, power in a few cards. They don't even need the keep sometimes. A lot of times what they'll try and do is they'll let you generate the power and go ahead and throw a Letho over. Yeah, true. Like, uh, Letho combo is, is, is a bit of a cry foul one. Well, yeah, it is what it is. It's, it's, that's what I'm trying to allude to earlier with my... It, it, there's potential in that faction. It, it, as soon as these combos, it, it, any of those combos, become, like, more consistent, like, if I could guarantee that I would always have Operator Cancerella and Leto and, like, a few shekels in my opening hand, that, that's just a win. It, it, it's a very powerful combo, and it, if you can just hit it more consistent, then it, it can be potentially really scary on ladder. I think that... Well, like, for, for the Calvary and Spy, is a Monsters and Hensart are kind of a problem, because you have, I mean, Rans maybe not so much, but Ekimaras just eat the Cantarella, they eat the uh, stuff you want to treason, or stuff you want to carry over with your uh, big ability. They also get bigger keep, where, and then Hensart can just promote stuff, and they're probably going to be able to get more power anyway than you. So, like, it depends also if you're using Lock Tosses or not. And that's kind of an anti synergy going on there a bit. I don't know. Uh, I, I, like, I wanted to say. <laughs> I, I feel yeah. like my, my, my personal. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Uh, real quick, I, was just, I agree with you in it being cold. <laughs> it definitely belongs in the cold list, but I'm just saying that there is potential in the faction that it can gain more cards. Yeah, I, I think, like, personally, I dislike the Rot also change. Like, I feel like that part was so important that, like, you don't let them, like, give them two turns to re react to your Rot Like, it's, it makes it so awkward. Like, you can't play around your Rot anymore. And I felt like before they were doing some work at least. Now, it seems like they are literally just, like, they're okay and they aren't bad or anything, but it feels like I actually, like, too strange for a longer time, I don't think that's worth and I, I don't quite remember what, like they changed um, Burgerforce too, right? I, I don't, like what did they change about Burgerforce and Patch? I can't quite remember. Uh, so, it, I, they changed the, the, the way that the burning happens, I think? You can't, you can't, you, you can't. Can only draw... Oh, I can't remember. I think it's... You can't target. I think the thing is, actually, a lot of stuff got changed to where you can't uh, use on your opponent's side of the field if they pass. Yeah, the pass. Yeah. I think that's actually a big deal, to be honest, because um, like you can't keep it as last card anymore. I think, to be honest, like one of the strongest version at the moment is the middle version, where you just try and know your opponents, and whereas like. Um, like the grave hack lists that were like pretty popular, not necessarily like the last two or three days ago, but before that, a lot of grave hacks on the ladder. And they tend to run out of cards actually at some point, and um, with like King of Beggars and, and Tort too. And they just go through the entire deck sometimes, and uh, you could move them. And against Goya, obviously, we, like, we, we have like two cards at best in the uh, end of a match at the, at the bottom of the deck. And if you run some low options, you have like pretty good chances against but, but then again, like monsters, if you run Kirby, yeah, like Freddy said, you, like, they just eat um, the spice, or like you sometimes can even scorch the spice when you play Goya. 
if you run again, like play against Galliard, you can sometimes set it up so that Squash kills like two or three spies and then suddenly Galliard is pretty fucking useless. <laughs> So that I, I I know this, we could keep on going on this, and but we're we're coming to the end of the show, believe it or not. So we still have a couple more things to hit. Um, so let's go ahead and change the feed one more time, and let's go to. So that's the state of the meta. I'm sorry to give that was a hard transition, but I do want to try to get this next slide in. It's very important. Okay, so uh, I know y'all all wanted to talk about this because you all had great success with the Gwent Challenger, some more than others, but still all great success. So we're looking at the uh, not so much. Okay, or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think Freddy can also tell a horror story there. <laughs> yeah, that didn't go too well. So we are gonna look at a couple things. So just uh, so you know the some some of the tournaments that are out there that are that are going on. Uh, the Gwent Challenger obviously happened and the, the, the championship is gonna be soon. We'll talk about that. The Paso Flora Championship, obviously I'm gonna get a shameless plug in. It's uh, May sixth. And I will shoutcast it May 10. Signups are next Friday. Please sign up. Good Gaming Invitationals. One is this Sunday. And I believe in two weeks after that, another Sunday. Uh, the following Sunday immediately. What's that? Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, Sunday the 23rd and Sunday the 30th. Uh, the 25th has a 505 high school. Wow. The 30th has a 1,000 high school. Dale's the man. Yes. Good gaming invitational. And then um, I want to, Gwendolyn Open. Uh, Dale, if you want to talk. I know you don't have a, T, a TBD, but if you want to talk. No, we, so we decided that there just wasn't enough time uh, we, to be able to fit one in with all the rest of the uh, appearance going on in April. So we will, well, we're not having one for April, uh, but we will have one for May, and I'm hoping that we can announce that uh, date shortly. But we do not correct that. Very good, and I'd be happy to uh, announce that for y'all as well on one of our daily shows. Just keep it in mind. Uh, good gaming invitationals. Dale was happy, was, was very Gave you the invitation. And then a probably a little known tournament that you check out on Battlefy, the Bowstring Tension Cup. And I bring that up for a very selfish reason. I'm the shoutcaster for it. So uh, <laughs> so uh, go ahead and sign up for that. It's every Monday. It's a Monday Invitational. Really good guys at Coil Gaming. Um, extended uh, Code Hexel and I a chance to be the shoutcasters for that. And um, we're going to say yes because Code Hexel is not going to enter every fucking tournament this side of the Pesos. He's going to do that with me. We've agreed. He didn't say it, but we'd agreed. So, um, guys, okay, so what do y'all want to talk about? Do y'all want to go into the various tournaments? you want to talk about the Gwen Challenger? I leave it to you guys. Maybe good game. Uh, good gaming. Yes, since they are upcoming in a few days, like the first one, it's on Sunday. Yep. So. Yeah, we're all playing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, like, I, I am set up for both. I think Freddy yeah, is the same. Cool. Same. It's actually pretty nice, good gaming. I know good gaming for like, I don't know, I guess a year. And I was playing a lot of, uh, I was playing basically every Hearthstone tournament for good gaming. The best, uh, the best place I got in a Hearthstone tournament out of like, I don't know, two key players or something like that was top eight. It's pretty, pretty, pretty decent, but to be fair, they could work a bit more on the organizing part. I had to wait like two hours and a half for an opponent. Oh. Yeah, that reminds me of Challenger again, to be yeah. honest. <laughs> 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 like, I had yeah, great yeah, fun day, with her. Day one was. Uh, that was brutal. Uh, I've heard. Oh, do we lose sound? One, two, three. For the whole week, and I missed. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I did, like for me, I, I thought like it would take like half an hour to an hour per match, and then like. Thing we said, yeah, we have to re-roll everything. Like we. Somehow, some people got matched against the wrong person, and now, like, I, I was 1 0 against the other guy, and then, like, so, yeah, it doesn't count. Uh -huh. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was a little bit of, uh, like. The challenge of the tournament that comes from CD Projekt Red. Yeah. Managed a 
organized it? Sorry? Who organized the challenger? Who was the main? Or I think the audio is cutting in and out. I'm not sure. Tournament and so on, but I have a feeling ESL actually organized it. Um, see if Project Red said they would speak to them about it. Is anybody else's audio going out? Mine's cutting in and out on me. Yeah, same. Yeah, I yeah. think it's just uh, Discord. Yeah. Ah, great. Okay. Well, unfortunately, I don't know. Uh, it of went course. real quiet. Yes. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Discord right now. I think. Awkward. Right. Um. Well, shit. Uh, okay. Yeah, this is still disconnecting. Yeah, it's nice. it's it was going back and forth, and then it just kind of cut out on us. Brilliant. <laughs> well, that's uh, uh, that's not good. <laughs> that's not that's not what you're looking for. Um, I I don't know the the fix honestly. Discord's up and it's saying it's good. I don't know why. It's move to Skype. Um, maybe a little bit easier. Move to Skype. Yeah. All right. Um, how do I do that? Just hit the unmute button on everybody. It just unmute the Skype and mute the Discord. All right. Oh, so that's really loud. Yeah, we're gonna do that. We're gonna go ahead and uh, y'all can disconnect from Discord, and I'll go ahead and put it on Skype. All right. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we're all right. We fixed it. Yeah. Yes. All right. So before before oh, we we lost good Excel. Oh. oh no. <laughs> the star of the show has gone. So it is unfortunate. But we will press on because we are running tight on time. Good Excel. God, I apologize. <laughs> I didn't have, this wasn't the plan. <laughs> like to cut you out. Picture and then audio. Um, hope you enjoy the stream. All right. So. <laughs> shit. All right, so uh, All right. yeah, uh, let's continue All on right. what we're talking about. Um, we had tournament time. Y'all were talking about the good gaming, and let us uh, continue. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. To have like, yeah, I hope this will come like as a weekly thing, basically from now on, so that there's something to like train for and like uh, work for another week. But you have like a little bit of. Uh, I guess something to aim at, and uh, I'm like going to participate in a lot of these tournaments, and I'm really looking forward to just having great fun there. Hello, is this the right one? Yes, let me put you on to the right one. Great. Uh, let me let me let me do something. Hang up, and I'll put you on. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I believe that uh, Good Gaming is intending to have the same idea as the Bow Strength Tension Cup, but it just at the weekly tournaments, they, they really want to just make sure that they're uh, having them as often as possible and on a consistent basis. Wait, ain't Good Gaming monthly? Like, there are only two tournaments per month? I'm not sure. I know there are so at least two this month, but uh, I, I, yeah. I think that they, I, they want to do additional ones for uh, this after that like additional month i'm not sure okay because on every other game they have like two tournaments per month one for five hundred dollars one for one thousand dollars and if they want to do weekly for Gwent, then that's perfectly awesome is but the still, prize pool going to be like similar for each time or is this yeah, like a big the one prize pool is stable. no the prize okay. pool is stable that's the same prize pool for hearthstone and they're running it uh Two tournaments per month. Oh, fair enough. That's actually really awesome. Yeah. As a, I don't know, two weeks tournament, let's see. Yeah. It's, it's nice that we have these organizations who are, are I mean, I think it first of established a lot of people, and the fact that they're looking at Gwent now and moving over towards Gwent is, I, I'm hoping, indicative of something good for Gwent's future. 
I think uh, just on side note, I think it, Codexel, are you there? I kind of added you to the Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Hey, hey, I'm hey. I'm alive. Okay, cool. Thanks. So that worked. Look at this. Man, I'm on the fly right now. Woo. Yeah, no, I think it's great. I think there's a lot of – just on that list, I wanted everybody to see at home and then those that can't see at home on the podcast at Podbean. Just uh, saying that again. Uh, we have So we have the Pass the Floor monthly, the Gwendolyn Open are monthly, generally, not this month, but generally they are, and they're phenomenal. Pass the Floor is great. Amazing shoutcaster. Just want to say that again. Uh, good gaming invitationals. We hope they're more consistent. And now the Bowstring Tension Cup every Monday. So you have – a really developing and burgeoning Gwent scene with some of these. Now, these guys would all kill you, but uh, you could play me and beat me. It's easy wins, and that's why I'm here. Uh, so just join up, and then Codexel has a great view on tournaments. He's, hey, go ahead, Codexel. What, what is your review? Just play some, meet some people, have some fun. I mean, that's what it's there for. Like, it's a completely different kind of game style, like a completely different kind of strategy. It's so different from that or it's the only kind of experience that you can get by playing tournaments. And, I mean, what's there to lose? Maybe so, a bit of time, I suppose. You're seeing <laughs> on the... 11 hours in the case of Challenger. You're, you're seeing on the Twitch stream right now, if you're watching, uh, Dale warned me about this, and I want to thank... Seriously, Dale, thank you. Dale helped me set this up, because he is the all-knowing. Um, <laughs> you'll see on the Twitch stream that Freddy Babes is cut in half. Again, that wasn't on purpose. <laughs> Mojo has turned back into a thundercloud. That oh, might, awesome. It might be uh, on purpose. Nice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I call yes. it Thundercloud. Yeah. And so I, by, do, by adding uh, Codexel back to the show, it <laughs> fucked up our view. Codexel's not your fault. I forgive you. But that's, that's why you see Freddy Babe's cut in half. Mojo's a thunderstorm. <laughs> Shit's out of control. But we're here, and uh, we're, doing, we're having good times, I think. So, yeah. yeah I just should sure. rename myself to Tempo Storm. <laughs> there it is. You All right. So probably uh, edit. Yeah. Go ahead. No, go ahead, man. You're up early. Talk. No, you you, you should probably edit Freddy's uh, Freddy's name like Freddy Plus Codex. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys. <laughs> All right. So uh, we are actually at the end of the show. Although I do want to have some slides for y'all. I did do some more stuff besides that. Uh, I want to say everybody, thank you for watching on Twitch. Thank you for listening on <laughs> Podbean. It's goingafterdark.podbean.com if I've mentioned it before. If not, and I want to thank everybody uh, in order. Dale, I want to say thank you for being a part of it um, and establishing a connection with the Gwendolyn. I do appreciate that. Thank you for your technical expertise, your professionalism, uh, and your knowledge. I want to thank Mojo um, uh, for putting this all together. Great guy. He's, uh, he's streaming. Check his streams out. He can come in and tell you his streams, or I'll link it on this YouTube. He's phenomenal. I want to thank Zellos for being up at five o'clock in the four o'clock in the morning. Very knowledgeable player, top end player. If you haven't checked out his Twitch, please do so. He can link it or tell him about it on him. I'm talking a lot. I let y'all talk. I get this part now. And <laughs> Freddie Babes, I want to do a interview with you as a champion of the Pass of Flora. Thank you for being a part of it. Uh, you're a phenomenal streamer, as well as all of you on here. Really good. Uh, to check it out. Uh, thank you for being a part of it. Codexel, thank you for your patience, as uh, always. And um, I want to, before I let y'all all talk, I apologize. I got some housekeeping. Uh, next week, great picture, by the way. Next week, big surprises. I uh, can't tell you what they are because they're surprises. Big guests, can't tell you what they are because I don't know. <laughs> Bowstring Tension Cup Shoutcast <laughs> is uh, going to be held by me and Codexel because he's not going to be a part of it. And we're going to focus next week on beginners. Hopefully, some of these guys will come back. Uh, I don't know if I've ruined it for everybody, but I'll let y'all all sign, kind of talk about some stuff, sign off on your own way, starting with Dale and then working our way down the side. Dale, you're, the floor is yours, sir. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, just hope that uh, hope that people get into tournaments. Basically, I, I, I think me and Codex will just hearing him on it share a very similar thought because it is it's different from ranked it's it's different from letter it's different from casuals it's a new way of experiencing a game and it's a way that you can only experience by participating in tournaments and i think that it, it's a pleasure to me to be able to see that there's been so many tournaments that have popped up because i remember when it was just the beta brawls and the passive floor and we've have now two additional weekly tournaments that are going on with the quint challenger really stepped up the game for i think all of us who were running tournaments and it, it, it's you get out there and get in tournaments. It's a lot of fun, and I think that people will enjoy them. 
Awesome. Thunderstorm. Yeah. Wow, that sounds like a thunderstorm. Mojo Tempo Storm. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, basically same. I just hope I see like some some more people uh, streaming and in the community. I'm always having great fun, like stopping from the 